Dan Colco here with Mark Zuckerman. Mark, I was in the Nationals dugout uh, next to it last night, and Davey Martinez, a little more animated at the time, screaming out at the umpires, it cost us a run. That play cost them a run last night. Of course, Nationals fans remember Game 6 of the World Series when Trey Turner was called out in that same situation. Happened again to Trey, happened again to the Nationals another time. This is just an odd rule, and there doesn't seem to be much consistency with how it's enforced. No, well, the only consistency is that it's always going to go against the Nationals' way. Yeah. It feels like ever since 2019. Look, the rule is if the runner is in fair territory outside the running lane, and, and this is the part that Davey has the problem with, in the judgment of the umpire, interferes with the first baseman catching the ball, then they're going to call the interference. You can see Trey there. I will to this day insist he was already past first base whenever any contact was made. That's what David was upset about there. The plays that we've seen here more recently, particularly last night, to me is more of a definition of what interference should be because he was not at first base yet at the time of it. You can see he's clearly in fair territory, right? And he knocks off Dom Smith's glove. Now, it's a weird play, obviously. Trevor Williams, you know, this is one of those where a pitcher sometimes is told, purposely throw it at the runner you might be more likely to get that call if you do that his feeling was hey I'm just desperation mode here trying to get a guy out he can't think about those kinds of things but it's a weird rule I know Davey has argued to no avail to try to get parts of it changed uh, for whatever reason it will never seem to go the Nationals way for now and they just have to kind of live with it unfortunately and now that the base is even bigger you would think that there would be fewer <laughs> of these that's the whole idea about increasing yeah, but the, base the base is bigger in fair territory in fair territory there's more space for him closer to the line didn't run close to the line there was contact with the first baseman doesn't go the nationals way and that was an extra run for tampa bay last night didn't end up deciding the game mark it was a factor early in the game the nationals for the second time in a three-game span got a late run in the ninth inning because of a home run and it was a bomb off the bat of Jamer Candelario the opposite way to the red seats and on a line this guy has started out the 2023 season a big bounce back year for him after a down year last year with Detroit playing great defense and showing some pop as well yeah let's talk about the defense from the other day it was outstanding and I watched him in spring training and thought to myself oh this guy is a better defensive third baseman than I ever realized and you see he charges in on the ball well he even makes the play going back into foul territory and at the plate the nice thing about this is that's not a home run swing. That's a double swing. That's what they want from him, looking to the gaps. If he hits it well enough, it's going to carry it and go over the fence. So that's what they want. Here's the problem. The two home runs the Nationals have hit so far this year, Candelario last night, Cabert Ruiz the other day, both in the bottom of the ninth of games they're already trailing. And solo shots. And solo shots. So try to do that a little earlier with some guys on base. They might have something going for them. Unfortunately, that has not been the case so far. Only five extra base hits for the Nationals through their first four games. You know, it's early, got to get into the flow of the season, cooler temperatures and all that, but you're going to need to hit for more pop as the season goes on. The Nats are going to have to score more runs. They're aware of that. National, uh, the Nationals for the third straight day, Mark, are sending a guy to the mound who's making his debut for their ball club. This is a bit of an oddity here, but we get our look at Chad Cool tonight, University of Delaware alum. I love that personally, obviously. Uh, but this is a big opportunity for this guy who slid into the rotation with the injury to Kate Cavalli. I was waiting for you to make the reference. I was going to do it myself, but you already beat me to the punch. I, I should have I known know? you would do that. You know, this is supposed to be Cade Cavalli's start, and that's upsetting to a lot of people that he's not out there tonight and won't be all year. But they specifically signed Chad Cool over this winter for this reason. The idea that one of those five may not be ready to start the season. They felt like he all along was the right candidate for it. The numbers when you look at him in total last year in Colorado, not great. Break it down though, the first half of the season, he had a 3-4 ERA into July, then was dealing with a hip injury, it was never really the same after that. He has the ability to be successful. He's not gonna blow you away, doesn't have power stuff, keeps the ball down, ground balls, you give him a good defense behind you in the infield, he's gonna have some success. I liked what I saw from him this spring. This isn't you know, a huge assignment for him. He's been a big league starter for a while. Yep. He came to camp feeling like if he did his job, the chips may fall where they would. Somebody did get hurt, and he got his chance now. And I was told by some Nationals people, he can really spin it. The off-speed stuff yeah. is good. The curveball, the slider, we'll watch for that. And another thing at Colorado, they don't spin as well That's there. Right. So maybe some better luck here. That's right. Mark, thanks for the time, as always. All right, thanks, Dan.